Hi, this is Dark Fox 127 and welcome to another Skyrim Cursor Kit tutorial video. In today's video, I'm going to be covering how to create your very own banners and place them into the game. Now, although a lot of this video is not going to be based inside the creation kit, we will later on be going into the creation kit to obviously add them as texture sets, which is something I've covered before in a brief video, and then we'll be going in game to test them out. Now, for this video, I'll be using my very own templates, which will be available as a resource on my Skyrim Nexus page. All the links will be in the description below. And I'll be showing you how to tweak the various layers that I've been messing around with and getting set up so you can easily make banners literally within minutes. Now in this video I'll be using Adobe Photoshop, however the files should be easily compatible with GIMP. It should literally be loading with GIMP and it's that simple. It shouldn't have a problem, you shouldn't need a plugin or anything because I understand. I won't be showing you how to use GIMP at all in this video because I personally don't use it and I just prefer Adobe Photoshop. But the process is pretty much going to be the same anyway. So let's get started. Okay, so what I've gone ahead and done is load up my templates. At the time of this video, I've got five, but you might find that by the time you watch it, there might be more uploaded, or I'll be in the process of making more. So I've got five different templates. The way that these vary are they obviously have different shapes, and you'll see here I've got a sort of guideline, if you will. That doesn't get marked on the texture in the end you sort of tick it off but this shows you the different designs that we've got so we've got a rounded one there one that indents in a bit and your sort of standard one and all i did was i used bsi opt which you can see a video of at the top right of the screen now and i unpacked the game files got access to the textures and i found the generic banner texture which is the one that i'm going to use and it's the one that i recommend everyone pretty much uses unless you're going for a really different sort of banner style and what you'll be doing is using this texture on the generic banner mesh and we'll be doing it via a texture set. Again, I've got a video on texture sets that will show up on the screen now as well. However, we're going to show that later on anyway. And all I've done is taken the vanilla textures. I wanted these to be a bit more high res. So I upped the size to 512, 1024. And then what I did was just create my own sort of texture with a custom fabric and then pull this load of stuff on top. I'm not really going to explain exactly how I've done every process. I'm just going to show you how to use the template, but I'll give you a brief overlay. So long story short, what I've got here is my fabric. You can actually see what the vanilla one was at the bottom. That's what the vanilla one was. Pretty horrible. And I might actually try and make these look a little more dirty later on. So you might find that when you download these later on, I might have added a, another layer for dirt, which you can tick on and off. But yeah, you can basically click on the, the eyeball here and you can tick these on and off. And whichever ones are currently visible are what's going to save. So if I hit that, that effect isn't going to be on there when you save it as a DDS. But yeah, tick things on and off. What you aren't going to want is the guideline. That's just basically for when you are creating your banner. That just helps you to know where your cutoff point is so you don't leave anything hanging on the bottom. Now the one thing to explain is how that's been done is if you go to channels here and you click on alpha, you'll see that I've had to do slightly different alphas here. And I've just taken mostly the game's own alpha channels. The white is what you'll see in game. The black won't show up. So this is just governing the shape. And you'll see it's different on each one. So that's the difference between them. We've got a rounded one there. And we've got a jagged edge one there. So that's the difference between the different ones. So you'll go ahead and choose which one you want to make. So I'm going to use I'm going to use the last one here. Now I'm going to keep guideline on for now. And as you can see, I've got this here. This is the emblem. So I'm going to keep that on for the moment. And all I'm going to do is Go to my desktop where I've got an image ready and I'm going to drag and drop that in. Don't worry, it's not actually that size. It's a lot bigger than that. It's just made it smaller for some reason. So I'm just going to place that and control and T. I'm just going to adjust the size again until I'm happy with it and use this one as a base. Now, when I've got this where I want, I'm just going to hide the other one. And then I'm going to go to blending options. Now, what you'll notice is this doesn't really look like part of the banner. It's really standing out. So I want to fade this into the banner a little bit. Now, all I'm going to do is hit stroke. And you'll find that once you've got your settings how you want them to begin with, it will 
most likely save them. So you'll literally be going through tick, tick, tick. So as you can see, I've clicked tick and this just needs to be seven for me. You can put this to whatever you want. Put the opacity to about 80 so it fades in a bit and the color to black. So it's got a bit of an outline around it and it already looks a little better. Then I've put a pattern on, one of the generic patterns in there just to make it look a bit more fabric-y. And then I have changed the opacity to 75. Opacity is really the trick here just to make it look a bit more part of it. And the other thing I'll do is a color overlay, but I'm going to leave that for now because I'm going to have to mess with it to change the color. It's fine how it is. And then I'm just going to go to the overall opacity of this layer here. So make sure I've got this selected and notch it down to 75. Now, the other things I've got on here are design layers. So if I tick that off, the lines have gone off it. Tick that on, line straight down the middle. Tick that one on, two lines down the sides. And you can go ahead and mess with this if you've got any experience with editing software. You can just make your own anyway. But these are laid out just if you want to use my sort of template ones, which are nice and quick. So I'm just going to use those two on the side which is nice and what you'll notice is this looks a bit weird the outline here does not go across the whole texture now the way that the generic banner textures work is for some reason they don't use this bit on the edge it's just the way the UV map is just think of the blue outline here as the UV map which is the part of this texture actually being used so I just make sure that these overlap in case we're a pixel out or something but I've actually checked these in game and they are pretty much to the pixel they're perfect so shouldn't have a problem there but yeah i've got that on that looks fine to me and what i want to do is make sure the guidelines are unticked make sure i've got the image that i want on there and the other thing i might want to do is change the color so i've got here color tweak just double click on this bit here and it'll open this box now what you want to be changing is do not touch the lightness it's pretty much what it needs to be if you change that it starts to really wreck it so you just want to change the saturation and hue. Hue's the main one for the colour. So let's go with sort of purpley blue and knock down the saturation a bit. I'm just going to tick that off. And that's how I change the colour. So I've got my colour, I've got my design, I've dumped my logo on that I want, and I use the guidelines to make sure it's all leveled up. In fact, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move this down to the bottom. I think that's probably going to look better. I'll put it there. And if I wanted, I can go ahead and add some text. Something that I've gone ahead and got is a really good font for the dragon language. So I could use that. Oops, it's moaning at me. Doing something wrong, obviously. Probably need the base layer here. Ah, it's moaning at me. But yeah, I can basically use that let's just do a new layer that's how i'll do it now it is absolutely moaning at me for fonts but anyway yeah i could put like dragon language on just wanted to show off there make it look cool but it's not letting me do it but yeah i've got my banner looking how i want it now so i'm going to go to file save as then i am going to navigate just to the textures folder for now in fact we'll go into df127 we'll make this a banner and misc and then select DDS. Now what you are going to need is the DDS plugin, which I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, that's for Photoshop. I'm not certain about GIMP. I don't know if GIMP already supports DDS or if it's going to need a plugin. It's probably going to need a plugin. But just go ahead, install the plugin. Make sure you've got that, otherwise you can't do this. And then I am going to name this Generic1. And then make sure you select DXT5 and the alpha one. And everything should be fine. Leave it as default. Hit save. Now, this might take a little while depending on the speed of your PC. Mine's done it instantly. Sometimes it likes to sit there for a while. But yeah, that is that. So the banner has been created. Now what we need to do is load up the creation kit and insert it into the game. Okay, so I've gone ahead and loaded up the creation kit and I'm going to head to Raw Extend and go into the Frost Fruit Inn. And I'll just load that up. Usually takes a few seconds and brings up a couple of errors. So wait for it to do that. There we go. 
And now I'm in the cell, I'm going to go to this part here, just next to the door, I'm going to hide that light. And I'm going to replace this wreath with my banner, so I'm just going to initially disable it. Uh, by the way, a little tip here, it's always good to initially disable things rather than all out delete them. Uh, you're best just disabling things when you want them out of the way. So, yeah. I'm going to search for banner in the filter and go under static because I'm going to want a banner pole first and I'll use the winter hold one because I always use that one it's my favorite I'm going to put snap to grid on and position that about there that's good for me keeping banner in the filter I'm going to go under miscellaneous and texture set and I'm going to click on any of the city banner ones so Falkreath will do and I'm just going to rename that So I'm calling it DF127TS Banner Generic 01, so TS for texture set. And the diffuse is the one that we need to change for the one that we've created. So we'll click on edit next to texture. And I'm going to navigate to my textures folder, DF127, banners, misc. I've got another banner that I created earlier there. And I'm just going to click on the one that we made. So open that. You'll see it appears on there. Don't worry that it doesn't look like it fits. It's perfectly fine. It does squash textures like that. And for the normal, I'm going to keep it as generic because it seems to work perfectly fine for me. And it gives us that nice ripple effect on top of the one that we've already included into our texture. Although if I do include a normal map later on down the line with the mod resource, then go ahead and use that one. Because chances are I'm including one because it's probably better now. But yeah, we'll go ahead and click OK and create a new form. Yes, because we don't want to overwrite the other one. And we've got our texture set there. Next thing is go to world objects and movable static and again any of the city banner ones doesn't need to be the same. One thing to note if you hit preview you can have really wavy versions so the higher the number the more wave they are so I've got one for Corinthia Tower Reborn that's pretty much like that because it's outside and the wind's blowing quite strong up on the balcony but for now I'm just going to go with a pretty static one and rename it. So get rid of the TS there. Yes, I sneakily copied the name there. And then go edit on the model. And as you can see, this is using the generic banner mesh like I mentioned. And then you just alt click new and change that texture set for your own. So type in banner, go to the bottom because that's where your newly created texture sets usually are. Hit OK and you'll see our banners appeared. And I'll mention the, the holes in in a second. Click OK. OK, create new form again for the same reason as last time. Find my banner, drag and drop it in. And we snap the grid on. I'm going to push it up to this pole. And one thing with this, this uh, banner post here is it's not brilliant with the banners. There's usually a bit of a gap, so you have to tweak that with snap the grid off then. So push it up a bit. Just going to make that a little bit smaller as well. Going to clip with the chair and the post otherwise and that's my banner in game so the other thing i'm going to do is double click it and you'll see that it's got holes in it these are using roughly the same alphas as the vanilla one so you actually get this alpha channel in the extra tab that you can change you'll see that by default it's on 85 if i put that to zero i have no holes at all so the higher the number the more holes that it puts in and it makes it look a bit more rugged so I like to keep it at zero because I like nice clean banners, but you might not. And that is it. It's as simple as that for putting your banner into the game. And all we're going to do now is hop in game and hopefully see that banner hanging there. Okay, so here we are in the Frostfruit Inn in Rorikstead. And if we just look to our right, there is our banner in game. As you can see, it's a bit small because if I made it any bigger, like I say, probably would have gone through the pole and through this chair down here. But yeah, uh, you probably don't want to make them too big. So if you do want to scale them, then just keep them as close to the original size as you can. But again, yeah, I did make the textures bigger. So you should have a bit more sort of uh, room to manoeuvre with the scale. But yeah, uh, I think they look pretty nice. And... As long as you sort of learn the basics of Photoshop and mess around a little. I mean, uh, even if you just keep it as basic as what I've done, drop a logo on top of mine and follow the steps. Shouldn't have a problem. So that's it. Our banner works in-game. 
And that is it for another Creation Kit tutorial video. So I hope you found it useful. Please let me know in the comment section below. You can, of course, check everything out on my website at www.darkfox127.co.uk where you'll find links for my social media as well where you can go ahead and follow me. Facebook's where I post most of my stuff. And also, if you're interested, you can check me out on Twitch and follow me on my Steam group if you want instant notifications as to when I go online. And if you haven't hit that like and subscribe button already, please do so. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll speak to you next time.